it has been a shocking downfall for Bear Stearns. Over 83 years, the company was profitable through the Depression, through war, even through 9-11. But it just underscores that this credit crisis is a totally different animal. A rescue plan for battered mortgage giants Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. It reads like something from another time, an old-fashioned run on the bank. Consumers already smacked by high gas prices, now fearing the safety of their life savings at dozens of other troubled banks all across across the country. Our capital markets are functioning efficiently and effectively. Okay. Mark the is the capital markets are not functioning efficiently. We've had all of these people that supposedly have their fingers on the pulse. They know what's going on in the economy and they keep telling us that everything's going to be okay. But clearly, as the situation has deteriorated, they have continued to gamble at higher and higher stakes. When you get down to it, houses can't go up in price any faster than incomes over long periods of time. Eventually, nobody can afford to buy a house. IndyMac is the latest casualty of the foreclosure crisis, which, in fact, it helped create in part. Their business was to offer mortgages to people with no documents. They didn't have to prove they had a job or income. As long as the house continues to go up in value, this works very well for everyone, especially the bank, because the bank makes more on the fees than it does on the interest. They were making so much money. The banks were making money. The banks were selling these loans that were no good. They didn't have to worry about it to the securities companies. They were selling it to investors. Everybody was making money and everybody was thriving, which made the economy look like it was thriving. Once you get drunk on the power of all this earnings capacity that comes from these fees, there's a, a tremendous desire to keep the game going. And eventually you run out of people that can actually make the payments, so you start fudging the numbers a little bit. There have been homeowners that have inflated their incomes. There have been appraisals that have been inflated. The $300,000 house that is written down on the appraisal sheet as being worth $450,000. It's really not. You would fill out a form and you would say, I have an income of, oh, $400,000 a year. They say, you do fine, just sign right there. Because they're being paid not by the veracity of the information, but by the consummation of the deal. Wall Street and these investment bankers have taken hundreds of millions of dollars out of the system annually. Today, lawmakers grilling two former Wall Street CEOs about why they were paid millions, in some cases, hundreds of millions, when their companies lost billions thanks to their subprime exposure. You know, you have people like Angelo Mozillo that has, has collectively cashed out nearly half a billion dollars worth of stock options over the last three or four years. CEO's pay structure encouraged some risk taking that actually led to the subprime related losses. The problem is, is that price appreciation was a phantom. It never really existed. So now the prices are coming back into line with income and earnings power, but the debt's still there. And that's a big problem because as that debt starts to default, the people who own that paper now own a house instead. The problem is the house isn't worth what they gave you for it. So now they have a real loss that has to be recognized, and that's creating additional problems in the economy. So we have these bankers who have their hands out screaming that they need to be bailed out. They've taken all of this money out of the system and pocketed it, and now that it turns out that they actually ripped people off, they have the gall to come out and ask us as American citizens to take on the bill to make sure that they don't go out of business. In New York today, two former managers for Bear Stearns were arrested on fraud charges, accused of duping their investors into funneling more than a billion dollars into hedge funds the brokers knew were failing. In an indictment, the government points to an April 2007 email between the two managers in which Matthew Tannen urged Ralph Chiaffi to close the funds, saying the subprime market looks pretty damn ugly. But just three days later on a conference call, Tannen reassured fund investors, saying we're very comfortable with exactly where we are. We have about two and a half trillion dollars worth of credit losses that need to be taken in the U.S. That loss has to be taken by somebody. It can't be avoided. You can't make it not happen. It's real. It is the result of the contraction in home values back down to the point where they become affordable by the average person. And I just came from the stock exchange, Brian, where the question isn't whether another bank will fail, but which one and when. Either the people who originally suffer it will take it, which is going to be split between banks investment banks, investors, and homeowners. Or we can try to shove it off onto somebody else. Well, the only somebody else is the government. 
But if you transfer it onto the government's balance sheet, you haven't really given it to somebody else. You've given it back to yourself because you are the taxpayer. Okay, at the end of the day, the government gets its money from you in the form of taxes. One thing seems certain, more of our taxpayer dollars are going to be used to prop up Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. If we allow this to occur, if we take the debt, the bad debt, the bad paper, if you will, that exists in the housing market and in the commercial credit space, and we put it onto the balance sheet of the American taxpayer, we are going to create a situation in this country where your personal costs to operate your household are going to shoot the moon in ways that you can't even begin to imagine. The reason we had a depression was not because the stock market collapsed. We had a depression because the credit market fell apart, and that was because we had allowed, over the preceding 10, 15 years, a tremendous amount of speculative froth to build up in the granting of credit that should have never been given. The reason we didn't suffer a potential collapse systemically during the Depression was because we were able to ring fence off the essential functions of our government and leave it essentially immune to what had happened to the rest of society. And so unemployment went to 20%, but the United States as a government continued to function. As you try to evaluate whether or not these risks are real, what you have to ask yourself is this. Has anybody told you the truth so far about where we are? Real estate is local. It's not a bubble. Inflation pressures appear to have abated somewhat. The economy's growing. People are working. Or have they come out and said it won't affect the economy? Subprime is contained. There's not a lot of evidence to indicate that it's spread over into the rest of the economy. We have a choice to make for Americans. It's a very serious choice possibly the most serious that this nation has ever faced. If we take the risk of destabilizing the government that we have enjoyed and our way of life that we have enjoyed for 225 years, to try to bail out a bunch of people who committed fraud, I don't think that's a good trade. And that's the choice that we have. We're in a mess. How do we get out of it? Well, we could start by telling the truth. Where will the money come from if, in fact, we have to use the back? As I, as I said to you... Where is the money going to come from if you have to put it up? Well, obviously, it'll come from the government, but I would say and this... who to, is the government? The taxpayer. Situations are never hopeless. We have options as Americans. You know, if everyone's quiet, then you don't realize that there's a lot of other people out there that share your views. I got up about 3 o'clock this morning to come down here and make sure that my uh, voice was heard. I'm sick and tired of the government putting me further and further in debt. We need to make sure the politicians know that we're going to vote our wallets, but not for a handout, but for the safety and the security of our republic. Whenever I make a mistake, no one gives me free money. They're getting, you know, what, tens of millions, maybe hundreds of millions in bonuses. They can pay some of this. Leave the taxpayers alone. We need to tell Congress that regardless of what kind of screaming comes from various areas of the corporate sector, we can't afford to give the money away. Our money is worth half of what it was six years ago. And our kids are going to pay the bill. Our, our kids, ultimately, they're going to, every dollar they make, basically going to go to paying off this debt. So here's the challenge to you today. Call your congressmen, call your senators, tell them no expenditure of public funds of any kind in an attempt to stop what is going on in this country with the housing market. That means no bailout bill that is currently going through Congress and has come out of the House of Representatives. It means no more stimulus checks. It means no attempt to help investment banks or commercial banks that have made millions and millions of dollars, nor the speculators who have made millions of dollars, nor, unfortunately, those people who just got caught buying a home at a bad time. It means not allowing the government to take the desperation of the home flipper in California or Florida who has five houses and is slowly drowning as his payments escalate and turning it into the desperation of the government. Down that road lies great risk a risk that we cannot afford to take.